This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you to the worship and the fellowship of Delisle Community Church. Many of you were uh, downstairs for a time of uh, fellowship and refreshment just before the service, so you should be all fortified now for a strong hour of uh, worship and praise. We uh, want to uh, encourage you to relax, enjoy the service. Uh, we're going to sing together, and after the uh, songs this morning, we're going to dismiss the children to go down for junior church, and they'll have their special time there. So, once again, thank you for being here. God bless you as we worship together. Together, we're going to sing some country gospel this morning. Hopefully, it'll touch some hearts. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine, who thou befriend us, Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Early let us seek thy favor. Early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our beings fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, oh blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Thou hast loved us, loved us still. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Discouraged 
to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with the load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord. Despise for safety, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast All our burdens bear. May we all the bringing, all to the in earnest prayer. Soon in glory, bright and cloud. Reading from Psalm 119, starting in verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Tempted and tried we're half made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never
understand why. So cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Faithful till death. As we sweep through the beautiful game, further along we'll know all about it. Further along we'll understand why. My brother, live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand. Jesus is calling. 
calling all sinner come home oh for the wonderful love he has promised promised for you and for me though we have sinned he has mercy and pardon Pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus. Calling, oh sinner, come home. I have two scriptures that I want to read with you today. One from the Old Testament, one to the New Testament. And I want you to uh, take note of the relationship. See if you can see what the relationship is between these two passages from God's Word. Before I read them, I want to ask you to join me in a very simple prayer. Let's pray together this simple prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, speak to me. Let's pray that together. Lord Jesus Christ, speak to me. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, picking it up in verse 10 and reading through to verse 20. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, or wealth lost through some misfortune so that when they have children, there is nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry in their hands. This, too, is a grievous evil. As everyone comes, so they depart. And what do they gain since they toil for the wind? All their days they eat in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I have observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them, for this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. And now reading from Mark's Gospel. Some of you will recognize the first part of this passage as one that we read last week. It is not a mistake that we are going back to it again today. We're going to look at it further and continue on into the following verses as well. Mark chapter 10, picking up in verse 17 and reading through to verse 31. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have, and give to the poor, 
and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of our Lord. Did you hear about the fellow who won four million dollars in the lottery? He announced that he would give a quarter to charity. So now he has Three million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand, nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Yeah, right. He gave a quarter away. Why is it that it is so hard to give money away once you have it? In our Bible story today, we met a man who had just that kind of problem. Question, why did Jesus tell this man to sell all his property and give to the poor? There are several possible answers to this question. I'm going to uh, suggest three or four of them. One, it would have helped some people who were in desperate financial straits. If this rich man had taken all his possessions, sold them, and given the money away, it could have made a life-changing difference for some people who were really in a tough spot. Two, it would have enabled the man to get rid of his idol, which was wealth. You say, was wealth an idol? Yes. He trusted in his wealth more than he trusted in Jesus. Anything in which you trust more than you trust in God is an idol for you. Listen again to the words from Ecclesiastes. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This, too, is meaningless. If he had followed Jesus' directions, he would have found meaning in his life. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, Scripture says, is a great misfortune. Here's a third reason why Jesus may have asked him to give away everything he had. He would have stored up treasure in heaven. In fact, Jesus said to him, Sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. That reminds me of the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew, we find Jesus speaking. And uh, in chapter 6, verses 19 
uh, to 21, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Well, that's three different suggestions of things that uh, may have prompted Jesus to tell this man to sell his possessions and give to the poor. Just quickly to review, it would have helped people in desperate financial situations. It would have got rid of the idol in this man's life, his wealth. And he could have stored up treasure in heaven. And each of these answers is correct. But each of these answers by itself is incomplete. No one of them tells the whole story. There is one more reason why Jesus told this man to do this. And it comes right out of the text of the story. The reason Jesus told the man to sell all his property and give to the poor is found right here in verse 21 of Mark chapter 10. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus loved him. Jesus told him to do it because Jesus loved him and wanted what was best for him. This is a simple truth, but it is terribly important. Please don't miss it. Anytime Jesus tells you to do something, anything, whatever it is, no matter how hard it is to do, it is because Jesus loves you. He loves you and he wants the very best for you. Trust him. He knows what is best for you. As for this unnamed man, the scripture records that he went away sad because he had great wealth. He declined Messiah's invitation to come, follow me. Come, follow me, Jesus said to him. This is the same invitation that Jesus gave to Peter and to Andrew, to James and to John, to Matthew and all the other disciples. If this man had accepted the invitation of Jesus to follow him, perhaps we would know his name. Perhaps it would be as familiar to us as the names of these other disciples. Instead, he passes out of the story and we never hear of him again. As he so often did, Jesus used this incident as a teaching opportunity for his disciples. Verse 23 says that Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The Bible records that the disciples were amazed at his words. You see, they believed that great wealth was evidence of God's blessing and approval. So Jesus says, children, I like that. Uh, we might say it this way. Listen, kids, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. Now this, uh, at this point, I guess I have a little bit of a quarrel with the NIV, the New International Version of the New Testament that uh, we usually use here in our services because they leave out some of those words in this passage. And I believe that these are key words which are missing in the NIV. How hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. You see, the person who trusts in money and possessions more than they trust in God is going to mess out. It 
It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those are the words of Jesus. I think Jesus is talking about a literal camel and a literal needle. Now, some people have sought to soften his words by suggesting that he was referring to a small opening in the city wall of Jerusalem. The theory goes that uh, there was a, a very small uh, opening in the city wall, maybe four feet high and, and four feet wide or so, and that once the main city gates were closed for the night, if somebody wanted to enter, they had to kind of get down and, and come through that, that tiny entrance in the wall. And if a camel was to go through it, they say, it was called the eye of a needle because they had to unload the camel, make it get down on its knees, and then kind of you know, scooch through the hole in the wall. The fact is that there is absolutely no evidence that any such gate ever existed. They uh, had a, a wall with gates, particularly because they didn't want to have people coming in during the night. That was the reason for the wall in the first place. I believe that Jesus is deliberately using this hyperbole to illustrate the impossibility of eternal life for those who are unwilling to give it all up and follow him. Now the disciples are even more amazed, it says. Who then can be saved, they ask. Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. With man, it is impossible. It is impossible for any person to save themselves. It is impossible to buy God's gift of eternal life. It doesn't matter how wealthy you may be. If the man had said, look, Jesus, I'll give you all my money in exchange for eternal life. Jesus would have said, no, no, it doesn't work like that. And it is impossible to earn God's salvation through any act of sacrifice or service. What is humanly impossible is possible with God. For with God, all things are possible, including our eternal salvation. Never, ever forget this core truth. All things are possible with God. Well, at this point, Peter pipes up. He says, we have left everything to follow you. We've left everything to follow you. And Jesus responds, truly, I tell you, no one who has left home, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields for me and the gospel, will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Here Jesus promises a reward to those who follow him. Some people say, oh, don't talk about rewards. Don't talk about rewards for following Jesus. But the fact is, Jesus never hesitated to talk about rewards. In fact, he did it on many occasions. Jesus promised rewards for those who followed him at any cost. In fact, he encouraged them to keep their eyes on the prize. 
There are rewards for those who follow our Messiah in wholehearted faith and obedience. Rewards in this world, although in this world, he says, they'll come along with persecutions, but also rewards in the age to come when we experience eternal life. For all things are possible with God. Let's pray. God, our Father, I want to thank you so much that all things are possible with you. All things which are impossible for us are possible for you. And that's an amazing thing. Today, God, I ask that you would work in our hearts. Apply your word by your spirit to our lives. To make us willing to obey you. Because we believe you. And to follow you at any cost. Knowing that Jesus is worth it. Jesus, you are worth it. I want to thank you for the words of the psalm that was read for us at the beginning of this service. How a young person or any person can stay on the path of purity is by living according to your word. May we, like the psalmist, seek you with all our heart and not stray from your commands. May we hide your word in our heart so that we do not sin against you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you that you teach us your decrees. Thank you that with our voices we can express the truths that come from your mouth. We know that you inspired all of Scripture. And we rejoice in following what you have told us as one rejoices in great riches. Help us to meditate on your truth and to delight in your word, not to neglect. I ask God today that if there's anyone here who has never made a complete commitment of their life to Jesus Christ, that they would do it now. God, we know that you love us. We know that we have sinned. And we thank you that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for us to pay a debt we could never pay. Thank you that he rose again from the dead, victorious. And because of his death and resurrection, when we believe in him and confess our sin, we receive new life, eternal life. And it begins right here, right now. Thank you, God. Help us to follow Jesus and to live for you within the fellowship of your church. Thank you for making us a part of your forever family. Help us all to be faithful throughout this life until the doorway of death takes us home to you or until Jesus returns. We believe, Jesus, that you will keep your promise, that you will come again, and you will restore all things. We look forward to that day. What a day, glorious day that will be. Thank you again that all things are possible with you. We pray in Jesus' name. And now I want to invite you to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his faith toward you and give you peace. Thank you.